Good evening, friends. Uh, in my previous unboxing uh, video of the 455, I, I spoke about if I had some time later on this evening, I would um, give it a old test fit in the manners. And let's be totally honest, even if I didn't have time, I would have made time to make this happen. I've been pretty excited to get this going. And um, so anyway, um, uh, in a few hours, uh, not even a few hours, less, um, an hour or so, I've got it in the stock and it is wearing the uh, MTR, flip that around for you, the MTR match uh, barrel from a CZ457. Um, and so basically what I did is I took the American out of the stock. Uh, I'll show you guys real quick just in case you've never seen one. This is the stock I'm talking about here. Uh, super rigid and uh, I can't squeeze that together like I can't that's how even when I grab the buttstock and try to twist it this is one of the most rigid synthetic stocks in a rim fire I've ever seen so this is a great option if anybody's ever interested in in one of these and you can find one it's a great knock around rifle super tough and uh, the only challenge to these is is betting um, if you're gonna want to bet it I have pillar bedded them but as you can see the epoxy is uh, it's a challenge to do and it's doable but you got to fill the voids and anyway that's another issue so um i got it out of the stock and i took the original trigger spring out and i went through my trigger spring pile and found a substitute cut it to fit and the trigger is great the way it is a little bit of creep but definitely runnable for now and um i'm not even gonna bother with the yo dave kit i think i'm just going to um do a flyweight for it just for fun now that I've found one. So um, this functions uh, beautifully and one of the reasons I didn't touch on before is why I wanted to do a 455 because I'm a Bruno fan and I've had pretty much all the Brunos in, in, in various configurations over the years. The 455 action in my opinion is nicer than the 457. Now I'm not going to get into debate as to why but it has a lot to do with the bolt throw, it has a lot to do with the construction, uh, and I've had 457s. Um, I feel that the 455 is more reliable. Um, I've had issues with extraction and ejection on my uh, 457s, including chipped ejectors, extractors, and that's not new to me. That's or, or individual to me. That's to, uh, kind of a well-known problem. So this uh, action is very old. It's to the test of time, back to the, the early 50s on the one uh, Bruno one. It's very similar. So. That's partially because I know it so well, but I absolutely love the 455 action, and um, in a lot of ways I prefer it to the 457. Now the 457 has a beat on the trigger, and bolt stop, and stuff like that. It's a nice compact action. Um, I really love the uh, 457 60 degree throw. These guys have a 90 degree throw, so it's a little bit challenging. And before I go too further about that, you're really limited on scope sometimes, and I have a lot of experience with Brunos um, and 455s, 452s. So, for example, the previous owner had drilled in this beautiful stock for one of these guys. And this isn't a cheap one. This is a TAC Pro. And I don't know what he was running. But generally, there's a lot of kind of misconception that you need to have these sky-high rings or very high rings. And that's true to a degree. So I've got my right on, which is a 50 millimeter jet objective, 1-inch tube. I have a D DIP um, MOA rail on it, and so like it's you know these are Weaver quad lock rings, so it's got a high ring on it, and you can see the clearance on the barrel is minimal. But I had to take that cheek riser off, which I knew I was going to because if you've got any experience at all with these, there are options rather than sticking your scope, you know, five inches above bore. And I have my typical rubber bolt knob on here um, for comfort because I like those guys. But, you know, there's no issues. There's no interference issues. So it, it is doable, and, and it's it's a misconception out there that you need to really mount your scope super high. And in some cases, I suppose you would, uh, based on your, your scope choice or whatever you're trying to do. But there is clearance there. And without this knob, there's tons of clearance. So I like the, the bolt knob. I'm used to it. You know, you guys have seen it on all my rifles, so... But anyway, it gives me the very ideal uh, height over bore, and cheek well is, is excellent. Now, I had a uh, 457 Manners Varmint Precision Trainer before, um, and so I'm well aware of the cheek 
uh, weld on this height over you know for, for, for optics and I actually um, I didn't realize it at the time when I wanted to build up the 455 in this stock because I really love the the hand position of the 457 manner stock like I love this stock um, I don't like the camouflage but I love the stock and I didn't realize that at the time that the 455 stock actually has more things that I like than the 457 for some reason I thought the varmint precision trainer I mean for some reason I thought that they were identical but they are most certainly not the 457s is much slimmer up front has a taper to it whereas the 455s is much wider up front and um, when I held the 457 I was a little bit disappointed not in this area but this area it's very slender I prefer the kind of flat minimal taper up front kind of bench rust style because to me this rifle is meant to do a lot of things and it's it, my idea in building it is it was going to be like a Swiss Army knife of rim fires um, you know like any sort of chassis gun or anything like that that you're doing multiple things with and you know when I built the 457 before that was kind of what I had in mind um, that one had an IBI barrel and I've, I've talked about it a couple of times but I kind of wanted to go with the shorty this this time and uh, considering I know how this barrel shoots it wasn't really too much of a, a gamble for me but anyway this action like all things just slid right in um, and basically bolted right up with the bottom metal that came with the stock and uh, you know there's nothing magical about it the um, the barrel I have uh, skim bedded in the action or glued in the action I've done that with all my target guns um, I've used uh, Loctite bearing retaining compound before the green stuff um, it's pretty expensive so uh, I don't normally use it anymore. What I actually use is just a skim coat of epoxy. I know you're saying that's crazy, but it's actually not that hard to remove, and I I found it made a difference. So uh, it gets a kind of a skim coat of epoxy, um, and then the barrel is cinched down, and the grub screws are very very loose, just enough to hold it into position, and then after it cures you back off. So basically the epoxy is what's retaining this barrel, and uh, you get less chamber distortion. I found without the grub screws um, tight. Just my uh, my experience. Barrel is free floated on this, which you'd expect from uh, this stock and and um, heavy barrel. It's a generous free float. Uh, you could definitely get like well, I know in my 457 when I put an IBI barrel on it, which is a, a point nine nine zero barrel, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, in diameter, and the, no nine two zero. I'm sorry, and the CZs are point eight eight zero, I believe. Uh, um, I think that's what it is. So this is from a 457. And so there's lots of room, uh, no trouble with uh, free floating there. The DIP rail went on, no problem. Typical stuff. Uh, like I bought that rail used, but it was in excellent shape. Um, so it went on with the grub screws and um, w without any issue. Uh, the bolt on this is absolutely fabulous. And this gun's brand new, right? And so there's like, I'm so impressed with how smooth this is because this is out of the box, hasn't fired around yet. And um, it's already super smooth and it'll get uh, definitely looser tomorrow. So anyway, that's kind of the profile we're dealing with right now. I'm going to fill these holes uh, probably with like a dowel and I'll just slip some epoxy in and, and blend it smooth. And so if I ever part ways with the stock or I decide on a different scope where I need higher rings and I want that cheek riser back, I can just punch them out and put them in, but in the meantime, I'm I'm just going to fill those. It'll be pretty straightforward. I'll show you guys when I do that. It's It doesn't really need to be obviously blended to the camo color because, well, it, I don't really care, but just to, that's kind of sharp there as being a kind of like a composite. But anyway, I, uh, I thought I'd show you guys that, how it all works. So today we slapped it in, put the barrel in, glued it in, um, rail on, scope mounted, remove this cheek riser which is like I said it's a nice little unit and it's a good solution um, uh, but I don't I don't need it and like even with the the screws removed sitting completely flat on the stock it's still too high basically this height is perfect right now just like it was on my 457 without issue and I ran my old loop hold on the uh, 457 for a while and uh, and then I put a bushnell on it and um, more of a tactical style and it gave me no trouble except the Bushnell had a throw lever that uh, the same as this right on I didn't mention that but the right on has an integrated throw lever well screw on one I should say whereas the Bushnell's was kind of integrated 
And so the, the write-ons can be just removed, which is good because once you get to six magnification, the, the throw lever sticks out here and that interferes with the bolt knob. Uh, if you stuff, stuff it on eight, for example, or on eight, nine, probably nine power wouldn't do it. But, uh, so I just removed it. And now I have full range. And the write-on's so smooth anyway, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But if you, uh, if you wanted to throw a lever, you would have to keep it um, uh, no less than nine power, for example, and then you'd be fine. So that's that. That is one thing, and I guess that would that could be avoided to a degree with higher rings, but not with this particular scope because that's six power and that's right there. So even if you went quite high, you'd still hit it. It's just a, that's that's one of the quirks of a 455 for sure. But anyway, that's uh, doesn't bother me very much in that particular situation. And uh, I would rather have the height over bore personally. So that's kind of where we sit right now. And so my idea tomorrow is to uh, take it to the range uh, for a quick range session and get it zeroed. And then um, we're going to run with it on Sunday, I think, uh, just for, you know, for fun. And uh, I wanted to mention that I have some uh, Bruno single shot adapters. Uh, you know, this one's super, super old and they all fit with no trouble and everything's fine, uh, which is pretty amazing about the 455, 457s. Uh, this is the JW15 magazine, which is a Bruno 452 clone. You know, no, no trouble whatsoever, other than the retention on these guys is really tight, it always has been. Just that the retention, I shouldn't say that. What I mean is the, the, the mag plate on them is much thinner, so it, it sits, sorry, I'm off frame there, it sits much more deep into the action you can barely grip it but it fits other than that and then an older uh 455 mag all fits no problem um that's that's one of the cool things about uh especially when you step up to um a high performance stock like that is like uh i find the fit on these is even better like i actually you got to tap the bottom metal with a mallet just to get it to seat properly, the, the fit is that tight. And um, this is a bottom metal from a different rifle years apart, or probably years apart, and it just fits right in. So it's pretty cool to see that. Anyway, I thought I'd bring you guys up to speed is that this is what we're dealing with. A little short guy, super light. I would say it's probably, I haven't weighed it yet, but it's probably with the bipod, maybe nine pounds, maybe. Super light, and um, it's a nice tight little package. So. I'm looking forward to um, shooting it. And like right away, me personally, I prefer it to the 457 I had. The stock is better, I feel. Um, I know the 457 had a thumb rest and this one doesn't. And that's one thing that, that I, I miss. It had a nice little thumb, not a rest, a scallop almost. So, cause I like to keep my thumb here. So that's kind of lacking. There's nowhere really to, like your thumb sits naturally, but not like on the 457s. But I was holding it offhand uh, after I got the scope centered, and um, it's a beautiful gun offhand, uh, which, like, I, I'm a, being a former silhouette shooter, uh, really enjoy shooting offhand. And so you, when you get a rifle, it's one of the things, well, when I get a rifle, it's one of the things I check, is how it performs, you know, in your hand. And a nice flat section here is really important, you know, so anyway. Thanks for watching guys. Um, I will keep you up to date on how she shoots tomorrow. Hopefully I can get some, uh, some quick video at the very least. I'll, uh, I'll do a follow up. It won't be a, an ammo testing session because I know how this barrel shoots. I've seen pictures of the groups from the former owner. And so I know exactly what shoots well in this gun. So I'm just going to, uh, probably just mess around and have some fun with it and get the scope zeroed and, um, kind of get a feel for it put a couple hundred runs, rounds through the action, hopefully, and make sure the trigger's set and all stuff like that because nothing's broken in yet. So anyway, I will check back with you guys when I find out tomorrow. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Any questions, comments, leave them below, and I'll see you soon.